I may never get a chance to greet you again. I may never get a chance to see you again. But at least when I saw you once, I greeted you. And guess what? You greeted me back in an even better way. Someone does good to you, do good back to them in an even better way. Brilliant. And do not wait for someone to do good to you, but do good to people whom you interact with and others whom you can do good to as best as you can. I tell you why your life in this world is quite limited. You need to pack away as many good deeds as possible in order to be able to get to the other side one day and see a large number of good deeds through what? Worshipping Allah alone, we agree. Through the blessed teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And part of it is through touching the lives of others, interacting with them with the best character and conduct. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Khiyarukum ahasinukum akhlaqa. The best from amongst you are those who have brilliant character, the best in character. Amazing. Sometimes we only want to interact with a small circle, but Allah has let people walk past you every day. You work in a certain environment, you study in a certain environment. How do you interact with people? Someone was asking me a question saying, how do I interact with the opposite sex that is not related to me? To be honest, if circumstances make you cross paths in a way that you cannot ignore. Today, for example, I flew over to this beautiful country, Qatar, and when I got to the counter, I was a female. So within whatever I can, with respect, bearing in mind that I'm a Muslim, without something that is unnecessary, but at the same time, with character that is as exemplary as possible, you will have to put forward your ticket, you have to put forward your passport, you have to answer a few questions, because there is nothing you can actually do about it. But to now that you have this particular situation, make the most of it to touch the life of someone in a way that when you disappear, they feel closer to Allah as a result. Why? Because it's the teachings of Allah that asks you to be kind to people so that they can relate to the maker. If we were to be ho as horrible as possible to everyone, believe me, nobody would be seated here today. No one would be seated. Why? Because I need to be as bad as I can to you. And this is what happens when hatred, jealousy and enmity overtake the heart. People go out of their way to make your life difficult. I remember a case that just sprung to my mind because it's not so far, uh, uh, you know, not so far back. When someone sent me an email and said, you know, my sister-in-law makes it her business to turn everything I want to do or I do completely upside down and to tarnish my image and so on. And immediately I said, you know what? She needs help. She needs to be a Muslim, Muslimah. The reason is a true believer, Muslimah. You submit to Allah. You don't submit to your whims and fancies. You really don't like someone. Why? You can answer that perhaps, but that must not make you be ugly to them, nor must it make you be unjust to them. In fact, Allah says in the Quran that even if you dislike someone, you must still be just with them. Beautiful teaching of the Quran. Allah says, do not let your dislike for someone make you become unjust with them. Be just for indeed it is closer to piety and the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has blessed us with and it's amazing when I greet, when I meet people, even sometimes, like I just said moments ago, the opposite sex. Yeah. Islam does not say that you need to ignore the reality on the ground and pretend like you are someone who's not living on the earth. The ideal scenario, we do know it. We know what is the ideal, but the real scenario that we're living in, we need to make the most of it to portray not only the good image of Islam, but to be able to touch the life of someone in a way that if I were to never meet them again, it would still have left a mark in their lives. And this is why Allah says, Do not forget virtue between you, amongst you. Do not forget to be virtuous amongst yourselves. Be good to one another. Be kind to one another. Fulfill one another's rights. Amazing. You're a baker. And guess what? I'm a plumber. When, you, when, when I need bread, I know I've got a friend. You know, back in my country, there was a time 
May Allah never let us see this again. But there was a time when there was no bread. There was no milk. There was a shortage of it. Complete. When I say no bread, no milk, I mean it was very, very difficult to get bread or milk. And all those who had friends or contacts who were bakers, they were set. Guess what? I was one of them. So they were set. Why? Because you got a friend and you know there's something you need. He's got it. Do you think he's going to block it from you? Well, if he does, he's not a genuine friend. So it's amazing how it comes handy when you are in need. But we are not doing it because we're hoping that, hey, the day I'm in need, I'm going to get this back. No, we're doing it for the sake of Allah. We want a reward from Allah. But as a result, there are perks. There are side rewards. There are benefits that you will get. Amazing. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us.